Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about intermittent fasting and the different methods you can utilize to fit into your busy schedule. We'll go right into it. Alternate day fasting. This is when you're eating for 24 hours normally, and then the next 24 hours, you may only drink water. So you're abstaining from eating any calories, can, any calorie containing beverages and food for every other day, right? Alternate days of fasting. Next one is a modified alternate day fasting. And this is not a true fast because on the day that you're supposed to be fasting, you're, you are actually taking in 20 to 25% of your normal caloric intake. So let's say you have a 2000 calorie diet then on the day you're fasting, you're only taking in about 500 calories. So it's not a true fast because, you know, you are, you are taking some calories in during that day. You have a time-restricted feeding window. This is when you eat for a certain time frame during the day, and then you fast the rest of the day. And that window can be anywhere from 4 to 12 hours. So you can vary that up. So you can say, I'm only eating between noon and four or four and 8 p.m. And then you're gonna fast the rest of the time. So you can fast anywhere from 12 to 20 hours for the day. What I find most uh, useful for most patients is a feeding window of eight hours and a fasting uh, window of 16. So that way you're, let's say you're eating at noon and you can go all the way to eight o'clock and then you won't eat anything beyond eight o'clock until the following day at noon so that's a good way to get patients started in terms of intermittent fasting i personally use a eight to sixteen window so i will i get off work a little bit later so i get home it's around 7 38 by the time i have dinner so I won't eat till the following day around noon or 12.30, right? So I have a window of 16 hours where actually I'm not having any caloric intake, all right? So there are other methods of feeding where you do early time restrictive feeding. So you're gonna pick a time frame, maybe four to six hours that you can eat early in the morning. And that time frame can be anywhere from, let's say, 6 a.m. to noon or 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. You pick the hours early on and then you fast for the rest of the day, only drinking water. Then you'll have a cycling one where you have five days on and two days off. So we call it a periodic or cycling fast. You are eating for five days normally and then you'll fast for two days drinking only water. Okay, another popular one is six to one, where you're eating normally for six days and then fasting for one. Now you can actually use a combination of these, right? So I personally will use the eight to 16 fasting window and then one day a week I will fast, right? So I will do intermittent fasting for six days, eight hours of feeding time, 12 hours off, and then on Mondays, I actually don't eat anything. I drink water, right? And I see patients all day long. And I can get through that without any sluggishness or mental fatigue or anything like that. So it actually helps improve cognitive function. Now, there are other uh, feeding uh, schedules for intermittent fasting. So for someone who has, let's say, chronic inflammatory processes, you can use longer fast to um, initiate what we call autophagy or autophagy, right? Basically cleaning up debris from your body, the dead cells. So you can go longer, three days, four days, five days, right? It's also helpful for people who have things like Alzheimer's or uh, cognitive decline, where you can use that feeding window, a uh, longer um, fasting window to help clean out uh, the debris, right? So your body is basically uh, not processing any foods, right? And it's focused on um, keeping your uh, cells healthy. 
So a longer feeding period or fasting period for some people can be quite beneficial. But for longer feeding or fasting windows, you should be monitored, right? Because you can go into a hypoglycemic state and you don't realize it, you need to kind of gradually work into it or work with a provider who understands what's going on with you. Other patients like hypoglycemic patients where they have uh, tend to have low blood sugar and they get hungry or angry right, or hangry, right? Those types of patients, you have to get them a little bit more keto adaptive or have them have more fats in their diet before they can even do a fast. So you may have to put in more avocados, uh, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, and so forth to help build their reserves of fat so they can utilize it before they can even do a fast later on. And their fasting window might be short in the beginning, right? There might be a 12 and 12, right? 12 hours they're eating, 12 hours they're fasting. And then gradually change their uh, ratio uh, to a different level. But hypoglycemic patients need to be careful. Also with intermittent fasting or longer intermittent fasting, if you're a type two diabetic who's chronic, or a type one diabetic, you have to be very cautious, right? Because those patients can go into ketoacidosis. So they need to be monitored um, before going ahead and doing aggressive uh, intermittent fasting regimens, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.